Did you know that you can track packages from most every package carrier right inside of Home Assistant? All of this can be accomplished with just the tools provided by your carriers and your email account. No third-party services needed. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned to this week's episode where we take a look at installing the mail and packages integration for Home Assistant. Hi everyone, this is Ryan with The Smart House. So between my wife and I, we each get a ton of packages each week. Between the two of us, we get a variety of items from different carriers. Items for our boys, clothing, and home supplies. I also get a lot of boxes of laptops and computer parts for work, plus all the items I get for this channel, things I order and things that are sent to me. Some of these things can be quite expensive, so we wanna make sure we know when they arrive and get notified about that so we can retrieve them off the porch so nobody steals them. So about a year ago, I decided to seek out and see what integrations that you could use to track these packages. That's how I found this integration. Now, most major parcel carriers have a dashboard where you can log in and see the incoming items for a particular address. You just have to sign up for the service and it's completely free. Once you have this set up for each carrier, you'll have access to a dashboard where you can track all the inbound items to your house, even if you didn't order them. Then as long as it's being shipped to your address, it'll show up in the dashboard. Now you can also get package statuses emailed to you when items move to in transit, out for delivery, or they've been delivered. Now the really nice thing about how this works is that once it grabs the information from your email, it does all the rest of the processing right inside of your Home Assistant instance. So nothing cloud-based after it retrieves the email. Now how this works is it accesses your email using the IMAP protocol. Now if you're not familiar with IMAP, it stands for the Internet Messaging Access Protocol. This is a way of retrieving email messages from a server without removing them. If you're familiar with POP3 email retrieval, it'll actually download the message and then remove it from the server, where IMAP will actually leave it in place. Now I know typically most of these integrations are designed for folks in and around North America, but thankfully to the surprisingly large percentage of international viewers that I have on this channel, they've recently expanded this integration to include numerous worldwide carriers. In a recent update, they've added the following international carriers, Canada Post, DHL, Hermes, Royal Mail, Polka Polska, InPost.pl, DPD.com.pl, OzPost, and GLS. So if you live in a region that's not serviced by one of these carriers, like Rishab in India, sorry, the majority of this video won't work for you. But I would search to see if there are specific integrations for your country's mail and parcel carriers. Or check out the FedEx or DHL integration. That might work for you. I know they ship most everywhere. So one of the things that you do need to make sure you have is having all of your package tracking information go to the same inbox. So this integration does not support multiple mailboxes. So if you have your Amazon tracking go to a different email address, you'll need to set up a forwarding rule to move it into a single mailbox. Another requirement is you're gonna to have to have IMAP access to that mailbox. Some free email services like Yahoo do not allow you to have IMAP access anymore to your data. But I'm using Gmail for mine, which as you know, supports IMAP and the setup is actually pretty easy. On that subject, if you're using Gmail, one more thing you need to take into consideration is if you're using two-factor or multi-factor authentication to protect your account. You'll need to generate what's known as an app password. This app password will allow the client to bypass your multi-factor authentication when it's used instead of a password. This is so you can still support older applications and use Gmail. So for Google, this app password can be generated by going to your accounts and your security tab to generate a new password. Now make sure you note this down so play safe because we're gonna be using it in this project and you wanna have it for later on. But please note this can be risky because if this password gets compromised, someone will have direct access to your Gmail account or your Google account. There's no way of limiting it to just having IMAP access. So please make sure you keep this password secure. You also might want to make sure you change this periodically. Now the last requirement to make this setup super easy is you need to have Hacks installed, which is the Home Assistant Community Store. If you haven't got that installed, check up in the cards or in the description below, I've got a video where I show you how to set this up. It's fast and easy and gives you access to a whole world of new integrations and also Loveless cards for your Home Assistant instance. So now you have all your messages going into a single mailbox, you have your IMAP information, your username and password, and Hacks is set up and ready to go. Then we can move on to the next step. So let's jump on the computer and get started. All right, so now we're in my test environment. So let's go ahead and get the integration installed. So like I said, you already had Hacks installed. So we're gonna click on Hacks, Integrations, and then go to Explore and Add Repositories. In here, we'll search for Mail. Mail and Packages is the name of the repo. And then here at the bottom, we'll say Install This Package. So now it shows we have one pending restart. So we'll click on that and click Restart. A few moments later. All right, now the home system's back up and running. Let's head to configuration, integrations, and then down here in the right corner, we'll click add integration. Now we'll type in mail, and there's our mail and packages. Click on that. 
All right, so for the host, this is where we're going to put in our IMAP information. So for Gmail, this is imap.gmail.com. For other providers, you'll need to go either go to the documentation provided by the author, or you can do a simple Google search and look for your IMAP information there. We'll type in imap.gmail.com, port is 993, username is your email address, and password. Now again, if you're a Google user, you'll be needing to use an app password generated from the website. You will not be able to use your standard password. Click Submit. And then we're gonna go into step two. So here at the top, we're gonna to select the mail folder that we want it to read in. So if you have it configured like I recommend, you can use a different folder, like I've got a label called deliveries that I use. So I'm gonna set mine for that so it only checks that one folder, it makes it a little bit faster and it doesn't have to dig through your entire inbox. So I will find that on here. Now then the next one is the sensors list. Now this is where you can select which of the services you wanna use. So again, there are sensors that are used for the actual integration, like the mail updated. Then we've got United States Postal Service, mail being however many pieces of mail you're gonna receive. Delivered, delivering, and packages are all related to USPS packages. So packages are the number of packages that you have coming. Delivering are the ones that are in route, and delivered means they're, they have been delivered to your house. And then an exception is any type of error you have. Same thing with UPS, FedEx, and then Amazon. Now, you'll also notice you have the other options like I, sp I spoke to earlier about you've got Can Canada Post, DHL, Hermes, Royal Mail, OzPost, Podeska Polska, and InPost PL, dpd.com.pl, GLS. And then here at the very bottom, you've got mail packages delivered and mail packages in transit. So these two, plus this one at the top, give you generic information about mail being delivered. So then below this here, we wanna enter our email address inside the quotes. So this is the email address that you received your forwarded emails from Amazon for. That way it can check for those specific ones. How many days back you wanna check for Amazon emails? I leave this at three. Scanning intervals, five, unless you start running into problems where it's not doing it frequent enough, or if you feel like it's making too much of an impact on your system, you might wanna change this a little bit higher. And then I leave all the rest of these uh, the same. The image duration is if there's multiple images, how long it takes them to synchronize between them. This is for the Amazon package notification and for your mail notification where they get the images. And you can tell it to create a video for the images and create an image for notification apps, which are nice. Hit submit. Now it's gonna go ahead and set itself up. Go ahead and dig into the mailbox and then you should get the first amount of information probably in the first five minutes. So once it's finished being set up, you'll notice you have one device with 23 entities. We click the one device and it will show us all the various information that we get. So we'll notice two cameras in here, one being the Amazon delivery camera. So what this will do is take the images from the email you receive from Amazon and put them into a camera that changes that image every five seconds. So that way you'll see the, whatever gets delivered from Amazon using their own pictures. Same thing with the USPS camera. If you do get the images pulled from the USPS website, they'll show up in here and be able to go through there. Again, mine's not functioning correctly right now, but that's not a big deal for me. I don't really care, it's most junk mail anyway. All of your Amazon packages that are in route, so I've got four that are in route. I've got no FedEx packages coming in today. I have one package already been delivered. You know, uh, USPS has one out for delivery for me, so I can, I'm looking for that. And then there's already been one USPS package delivered to my mailbox. So you could take all of these if you wanted to and insert them directly into Loveless, or I'll show you here in a second a cool custom card you can use to make this a little bit simpler. Then at the bottom here, we have your mail updated, so it shows you how, how long ago it checked before it refreshed. And then you have a link to the actual image. When it does generate a image for your mail, it'll show up in here. So there we go, now we've got the integration set up, the data is being pulled into Home Assistant. So real quickly, I'm gonna show you how I make my dashboard a little bit neater using a project called Mushroom. So for that, we're gonna hop over my live environment because I already have it set up and I don't wanna do it again. Um, and we'll hop over to my packages dashboard. Now if you notice here, I have a number of packages, so I'm using these cards right here, which are part of the Mushroom package, make these small little compact cards. And the way I've got mine designed is how many pieces of mail, just for the UPS mail, the, for the packages, I have them all kind of designed the same way. I've got the number of packages that have in transit, out for delivery, and then finally, ones that are delivered. And when they get delivered, the icon will turn green, indicating that the package is there. Down here, I have the same thing set up. There's nothing coming for FedEx, so it's blank. And the, the USPS is still in route, along with the Amazon packages. And as you can see here, here's the camera for the Amazon deliveries. So hopefully they'll deliver my stuff soon, so then this will change to show the images of the actual delivered items. So I already have these installed, so I'm not gonna go back through the process of reinstalling them, but to install them is quite simple. All you gotta do is when you're in, in hacks, you go to the front end section, down here in the bottom, which is cut off, but go to the Explorer and Download Repositories and then search for them up here. Once you find them, you can install them by clicking and going down to the bottom and click Install. So to check that they're installed, once you refresh your browser, 
Uh, they should show up here. Again, I've got these are ready for update. Then we'll go back to my dashboard and I'll show you how I've got these configured. So if we look, this is a vertical stack card. So one, two, three. And then they have two horizontal stacks inside of them. So what I've done here, and I'll put all this code on the blog post just so you don't have to copy them off the screen. What I've done is I've created a mushroom template card, which this is specifically designed to have the icon, the icon color, even the primary and secondary information all able to be pulled out of a template. So in this case, I have an if else statement for the icon. So if this sensor is greater than zero, then it changes the icon to mailbox open up, else the mailbox, which is closed. So I'm gonna change this to black so you can see it. There we go. So in the event that this turns greater than one, this actually changed to the mailbox open icon, which has the flag up and the door open, which is pretty nice. Then we'll click over here. So that's for the icon. You can set the icon color and you can make the icon color dynamic if you want to. Give it a name. And then I'm just taking, uh, you put the curly bra braces, states, parentheses, and then in little single quotes is sensor dot mail underscore UPS underscore mail. And then you close that out and then I just have PCs for pieces. So that shows up there. And then when you click on them, it just goes to the default action. I don't really have anything else set up. Then for the USPS packages, I have a package icon, but for the icon color, it, it will change dynamically based on if the packages are in transit. So if you look here, so that if the state mail UPS delivered is greater than zero, which it is, it'll turn green, indicating a package has been delivered. If, if that's not true, then it'll drop down to the next one. If the delivering is greater than one, it'll turn blue. Then it drops down to the next one if the number of packages is greater than zero, which means that it's not been delivered and it's not out for delivery, that changes to yellow. Then finally, if it's not equal to anything, it turns white, so it goes away. And then if there happens to be an error, it'll turn gray. And then we have at the bottom the how I do this uh, little arrows here. I just have the state of the sensor, UPS packages, an arrow emoji, state of the delivering, arrow emoji, and then the delivered. And I pretty much have repeated that for all of the other items. The UPS, so again, you should replace the variables on all of these items, and then you can customize it for FedEx. And the same thing with Amazon. I go down to Amazon, and I've got those all set up that way. That way, at a quick glance, I can see the status of all of my packages, whether they're coming or going, and then I can also see the uh, delivery icons for the Amazon items, which is just a camera card, just a picture card. So if we go to buy entity, we type in camera.mail. We can select any of these. So we've got the delivery camera. We've also got the USPS camera. And then it's gonna suggest which card, add the dashboard, and then there. So we, that's how you can quickly add those cards in there. And then this is just the overall deliveries. So do I have any are in process? One thing to note is this does not count your Amazon packages. So the overall mail packages delivered doesn't count Amazon. That's just UPS, FedEx, and USPS. So just keep that in mind. And then we've got our updated icons so we know when the last time it was updated. So in addition to that, I've created an automation that will help you get notified if there happens to be a package delivered, if you want to set it up that way. So again, this will be in the blog post. You can feel free to copy and paste it. So I've got one specifically here for my FedEx. You can combine these together if you want to into a single one. I started that but never finished it. So when the FedEx delivered changes to above zero, then it makes sure that the number is above zero and then sends me a notification. So it sends me a notification via Telegram and it says it looks like FedEx has delivered your package and it tells me how many out of how many packages have been delivered. So then you can easily customize this automation for whatever you want and have it set up to notify you whenever your packages arrive. Again, not all services have an immediate update. So for example, I know for a fact UPS just came and dropped off a package and they haven't updated the numbers yet. So it does take a minute and it does matter when the service actually does their update and then when they actually send that email to your inbox for it to show up. So now you can, you can track the status of your packages all within Home Assistant. You have the ability to now see how many packages are inbound on multiple carriers and be able to tell when those packages get delivered. So hopefully this was a helpful introduction to this particular integration. Uh, I did find another integration that I started playing with, but it turns out that it no longer works in the current versions of Home Assistant. So that one allowed you to do tracking numbers, but it looks like that one does not work. So don't attempt to set that one up because it doesn't really function, probably because the email requirements have broken on there. So if you enjoyed that project, I've got an entire playlist of other Home Assistant integration projects you can go to right here. And if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo right here. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next video.